happening now, what we know about a late night stabbing death here in Jamestown. Plus, an update after a three-year-old drowns in a backyard pool. Oh, and the heat and humidity continues to rise today and especially through this week. I've got the full details next. The news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. Police are now looking over surveillance video from the area where a 23-year-old man was stabbed to death overnight in the city of Jamestown. Jamestown police say that the victim was stabbed while walking on the sidewalk along North Main Street between East 4th and East 5th Streets around 10.14 p.m. Investigators believe a man in his 20s approached the victim and then stabbed him. The 23-year-old was taken to UPMC Chautauqua Hospital where he died of his injuries. Now, police say this was not a random act of violence and is likely a result of a dispute. Officers are asking for anyone with information in the case to contact their anonymous tip line at 483 TIPS. That number is 483-8477. Now, they say additional information is expected to re be released that later this afternoon. And when we have an update, we'll provide it for you online and on the WNY News Now mobile app. Well, at this hour, police are investigating the drowning death of a three-year-old boy in the town of Gary. New York State Police say the boy drowned in a backyard pool on Monday. Troopers were en route at around 440 to a report of a missing child who was discovered later unresponsive at the bottom of an above-ground pool. Troopers and a Chautauqua County Sheriff's deputy attempted life-saving measures but were unsuccessful. The boy was transported to the Erie County Medical Examiner's Office for autopsy. The Sinclairville Fire Department and EMS also responded to the call, and police say the investigation is continuing. All 700 school districts in New York State are developing reopening plans for a reopening that may not happen for longer than first thought. During a press conference update yesterday, Governor Andrew Cuomo said safety of pupils and students will be the biggest factor in any decision on reopening the thousands of schools across the state. Nobody even knows the effect that this is going to have on uh, students, socialization of young students, etc. We want kids back in school for a number of reasons, but we're not going to say children should go back to school until we know it's safe. Every school district is coming up with a plan to reopen that doesn't mean they are reopening. The COVID-19 numbers are much better here in New York, the governor says, adding he understands people's frustration with the phases and new rules. He says casinos and movie theaters will be remained closed as of now. Well, AJ's Texas Hots on Foot Avenue in Jamestown are continuing normal operations in hours after being cleared by the Chautauqua County Health Department with an employee tested positive for COVID-19. Co-owner and general manager Sam Finch tells WNY News Now an employee tested positive but did not have contact with any customers the day he was ill. Finch says the employee was sent home and will return to work a week or so after he is cleared of his quarantine. We already clean and sanitize as a restaurant like we're instructed to by the health department anyway. So those are some of the things that when I spoke to the health department that they said those things were already in place and we're confident that you're fine. So there's no, there's no need to be concerned. Finch says the staff at AJ's were already practicing several safety measures. They all have been wearing masks, sanitizing throughout the restaurant and cleaning surfaces. Indoor dining there is currently closed until all state COVID restrictions are lifted. Well, we thank you for joining us here for WNY News Now on this very hot and steamy Tuesday. Got to say hello to Laurel. Good to see you on the broadcast. Great to have Joseph here. David, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to Roy, uh, Patricia, Debbie, Zachy, Rod, Wallace, and Wendy. Uh, great to have you as always. Happy Tuesday. Let's uh, shift gears now and get a check of our first defense weather forecast with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter 
And uh, Mr. Hunter, today is certainly a hot one out there. It is, and it's going to be that way throughout much of this week. Happy Tuesday, uh, by the way. We finally made it through Monday. This is a live look coming. That is, of course, uh, that is the beautiful Chautauqua Lake, and that is Finley Lake for you. Look at this air temperature already, 83 degrees there at Finley Lake right now, but it's not so much the air temperature that is the problem. It is the humidity that is the problem. It is very up there. We're going to be in near tropical humidity as we go throughout the rest of the week. First defense Doppler radar is dry right now, but there will be, just like yesterday, scattered afternoon showers hours and storms popping up during the during the peak heating hours of the day through this afternoon. So there's the muggy meter for you shot up in the muggy category, but watch where it goes tomorrow up into this oppressive level, 70 plus degrees uh, for dew point temperatures, and it's going to stay there through Thursday as well. So that's the tropical humidity. So again, if you've ever been down in Florida during the summer, that's almost the kind of humidity we've got. It's like throwing a soaking wet sponge against the wall. That is the kind of humidity we're going to be dealing with. 86 was the high yesterday, 63. Uh, 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 is, of course, where we bottomed out this morning. 98 is the record high for this state. That should be safe for another year. And 38 uh, is the record low temperature for the state. So through the afternoon, mostly sunny, hot, very humid, widely spaced, pop up showers and storms through the afternoon, basically across the southern tier. You know how these work. They pop up and fall apart at random during the peak heating hours of the day. 83 at the, at the immediate Lake Erie waterfront. 94 well inland and not a whole lot of wind to help, but honestly, a hot wind doesn't make it feel that much better. This continues throughout the week, but some relief will be on the way for the weekend. We'll talk about it later in the show. Justin? All right, Dakota, thank you very much. A Cattaraugus County landlord is facing attempted murder charges after allegedly shooting his tenant during a dispute late last week. New York State Police tell us 51-year-old Daniel Langdon Jr. of Little Valley was arrested following a dispute on State Route 98 in the town of Farmersville just after 6 o'clock Friday. Police allege that Landon got into a physical altercation with his tenant, a 40-year-old man. Now, during the altercation, troopers say Langdon pulled a legally owned 9mm pistol and shot the victim multiple times. The victim was airlifted to the Erie County Medical Center for non-life-threatening injuries. Congressman Tom Reed says a state health department investigation into nursing home deaths from the COVID-19 virus is just a way for Governor Andrew Cuomo to dodge responsibility. Reed has been calling for an independent investigation into nursing home facilities. He says justice is not serving by having agencies investigate themselves when they were responsible for the actions. The probe did deduced that staff at nursing home community centers infected with COVID-19 were the prime cause of the virus spread, but was not because of a directive March 25th in which Governor Cuomo ordered positively tested seniors to be sent to those nursing homes. Reed countered that Cuomo's actions created COVID hotspots that killed thousands of vulnerable senior citizens here in New York State. Reed and other Republican lawmakers continue their call for an independent investigation into the governor. Coming up next, police have finally made an arrest following a church break-in last year. But first, the latest on the states that are now under New York's COVID-19 travel advisory. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Stay up to date on local news, weather, and sports that matter to you. Plus, subscribe to breaking news and weather alerts from the team that puts coverage first. In addition, watch news as it happens with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. 
and welcome back. With many states seeing an increase in COVID-19 cases, Governor Andrew Cuomo today added three more to the New York travel advisory list, bringing the number to 19 states. The governor added Delaware, Kansas, and Oklahoma to the list. Anyone coming to New York from any of the 19 states listed must now stay in quarantine for 14 days under his order. States on the list have positive test rates of more than 10 per 100,000 residents for a seven-day rolling average or a 10% positive rate in a seven-day rolling average. Well, following a months-long investigation, the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office have charged a Jamestown man with burglary in connection with a Cayentone church. Deputies charged 24-year-old Johnny Ray Hollowell of Allen Street with third-degree burglary, fourth-degree grand larceny, and fourth-degree criminal mischief. Now, the arrest follows a burglary back in September in the Koinone Christian Fellowship Church in Cayentone. The church office was burglarized and various items, including laptop, computers, and around $80 worth of change for the church's children were taken. Meanwhile, a New York State trooper was hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries after his car was rear-ended by a tractor trailer on Monday on Interstate 86 in the town of Almond. Police said the trooper parked his state car rolling along the highway to conduct a traffic control for a disabled camper with his emergency lights flashing when a tractor trailer rear-ended that vehicle. The driver of the tractor trailer was charged with multiple traffic tickets and his truck was taken out of service by police. There is no current update on the trooper's medical condition. Well, as summer is heating up, some are eager to travel, but travel, but because of the pandemic, not as many as last year, are expected to hit the road, according to AAA. States like New York have implemented some sort of travel advisory with consequences for those who travel to hotspots around the nation. Mandy Gaithner explains more about where people are escaping to this summer. It's a summer like no other. With coronavirus cases continuing to surge, many Americans who had been planning to take a vacation may be rethinking that holding off until the last minute to plan a trip. And AAA is forecasting that travel will fall more than 14.5% between July and September compared to last year. The organization is expecting more than 700 million trips overall in that time period, and traveling by car will likely account for 97% of all trips this summer, with air travel forecasted 74% below last year's levels. AAA says when it comes to recent online searches for trip destinations, some cities aren't as popular right now. Orlando, Florida dropped from the top search city destination to number eight, while Denver, Colorado made the biggest climb from number 10 to number one, followed by Las Vegas and Los Angeles rounding out the top three destination searches. AAA also expects the national gas price to average near $2.25 a gallon over the summer. The organization says this will be the cheapest summer for filling up since 2016. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. If you plan to travel, AAA says it's important to book hotels and plan out gas and food stops. They also say keep in mind that some national parks and attractions have capacity limits, so you'll want to make arrangements in advance. Well, we thank you all so much for joining us here for WNY News Now as we make our way through uh, could be one of the hottest weeks of the summer. Got to say hello to Paige. Good to see you. Good to see Lindy, Ron, Dan, Anna, Jesse, uh, Dixie, Andrew, and Laura as well. Hopefully everybody is having a good day and uh, finding some way to beat the heat. Speaking of heat, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter is back with us now with a full look at our weather. And Mr. Hunter, I know the word heat wave has been tossed around mm -hmm. um, in certain areas here in New York State. Um, and it's looking like it could possibly uh, feel like one here in Jamestown. 
Yes, and it, uh, you know, it is a heat wave when you compare it to temperatures up to the north. But again, you know, this is something we talked about yesterday and especially last week. Forecasting 90 around here is kind of hard to do. It doesn't happen very often. But again, you know, this is the same graphic we've been showing. Basically, a heat wave is scientifically defined as two or more days as uh, 90 or above. I prefer three days, but it's generally two or three days of 90 or above. And obviously, the, the uh, health impacts can be here from, you know, um, the uh, heat stress and heat exhaustion and poor air quality as well. So this is the same thing we've been talking about, you know, and the problem now is that, you know, we're getting warmer and much more humid. So where's a good place to be? The beach, if you want to hit uh, the uh, the uh, beach today. 83 is going to be the cooler spot today at the Lake Erie waterfront. Very high UV index. So have the sunscreen handy. Look at that Lake Erie water temperature, 74 degrees. That's almost bath water, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I guess when you kind of think about it here. So um, whack-a-mole storms through the afternoon today. It's almost the same thing as yesterday. These widely spaced pop-up showers and storms through the afternoon. They're not going to last long and not everybody is going to get a storm. But where you do, there could be some heavy downpours. It continues to be hot and muggy throughout much of this week. That is basically the weather story. The heat index as we get later in the week could be mid to upper 90s. So again, this is something we've been talking about, especially yesterday. That's going to be a big deal, but it turns much cooler for the weekend. We all need a little bit of a break. 84 is the current temperature right now as of noon hour at the Jamestown Airport already uh, into the mid 80s uh, with a variable wind of five. And look at that dew point at 64. That's key here because the higher the dew point gets to the air temperature, the more humid and muggier it is. So again, uh, the forecast heat index over the next five days. Again, you know, you can see 89 today, 90 tomorrow. This is when we're going to get some of the hottest air Thursday and Friday, both Thursday and Friday. I think we have a shot of hitting 90. Now we did put 90 in the forecast, but understand that's being conservative. I'm not so sure if we're going to hit 90, but again, we'll have to see as we go throughout the rest of the week. But the heat index is going to be in the mid 90s. Now, 95 degrees is the criteria for a uh, is basically, you know, some sort of a criteria for uh, the heat advisory uh, per the National Weather Service in Buffalo. Now, there is one issue to the north, which includes Buffalo. We would not be shocked if this is extended further into the southern tier, likely tomorrow going into Thursday and Friday. Doppler is clear right now because what's going on is we actually have a stationary front that's kind of straddled right along here. So as long as the front is kind of near our area, we're going to have scattered showers and storms along with the high humidity uh, as well. And also a cold front is going to be moving our way as well, but it's not going to produce uh, much cooling around here. Feature scan shows you those pop-up showers and storms through the afternoon. And again, the radar is not going to look exactly like this. So please understand that uh, this is just a computer simulation. A few showers early this evening that tapers off overnight. Fog sets up, but it's not going to be much cooler. Temperatures only upper 60s uh, to lower 70s tomorrow a repeat scattered showers and storms pop up in the afternoon after a mainly dry start but it's going to be very hot and humid once again so zone forecast we'll start at the lake erie shoreline we go west young man uh to the lake erie shoreline here right at the water will be the cooler spot likely lower 80s there should be a lot of sunshine now as you get farther inland this will be the better chance for any of those pop-up showers and storms some spots could be knocking on lower 90s especially down in northwestern pennsylvania next seven days of your life coming up right now 88 tomorrow 90 on thursday the record for thursday by the way is 100 set back in 1936 i think we'll be be safe for that 90 once again on Friday and then here comes a nice cool down as we go into the weekend and into early next week but Monday is not going to be a washout we should see some peaks of sunshine we will take a break and be right back You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. 
When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back. A move by the Supreme Court has cleared the way for several pipeline projects. The decision by the nation's highest court yesterday excludes the controversial Keystone XL expansion, but it fast-tracked the permitting process for other projects. The justices ruled that the Keystone pipeline must still abide by the strict environmental review process. Though the case is a partial win for the Trump administration, the exclusion of the Keystone XL is a pretty big defeat for the president, who made good on a campaign promise to move forward with the project through an executive order. Now, if lengthy enough, that process could jeopardize the pipeline's existence altogether pending the outcome of the 2020 election. Democrat presidential candidate Joe Biden has plans to rescind the permit for Keystone if he wins. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the United States is considering a ban on Chinese social media apps, including a popular local app known as TikTok. He made the remarks during an interview with Fox News' Laura Ingram. Pompeo says people should only download the popular video app if they want their private information in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. TikTok is owned by Beijing-based ByteDance, though the app has previously said it operates separately from them. Creators also claim its data centers are located outside of China and not subject to Chinese law. Well, carbivores, if you don't need much of an excuse to indulge today because July 7th is known as National Macaroni Day. Contrary to the popular opinion, the name macaroni didn't actually come from the shape of the noodles. According to the National Day Calendar website, macaroni was named after a type of dough that's used to make those noodles. When it comes to cooking with macaroni, the sky is pretty much the limit. Noodles can be used in countless ways, including casseroles, hot dishes, soups, and even some salads. To celebrate the holiday, you can make your favorite macaroni dish and enjoy. Don't forget to use the hashtag National Macaroni Day if you're going to be posting those on social media. Certainly, gotta love it. I love mac and cheese. I love Italian food. I love noodles in my chicken noodle soup. You can't go wrong with macaroni. I mean, you know, if you looked at Justin, you, you, you'd know that. Gotta say hello to Gary P uh, Petrilla. Good to see you. Good to see Jennifer. Good to see uh, Paige as well. Hopefully, everybody's having a good day. And you're beating the heat out there because it's hotter than hell. Uh, let's check in with Chief Forecaster <laughs> Dakota Hunter. I knew I'd get him. I knew I'd get him. Dakota, the more sarcasm that I throw your way. I love it. The, the, I the better it. I could get him. Well, oh, my. I love it. That it all comes great. back to, to what you did to me last week when we were talking at the, at the end of the show. Um, and uh, you, you misheard me. So yeah. I'm going to enunciate as much as I can. <laughs> okay. Forward. Sounds good. No so confused. how about macaroni day? How about uh, macaroni salad, anybody? Mac and cheese? Actually, a little trivia. You know, a lot of people think us Italians invented pasta. We didn't. The Chinese did. We just take credit for it because we added oregano. Tonight, uh, temperatures tonight, uh, 64 to 73. Early showers and storms taper off with fog setting up overnight. Looking down the road, bigger story is going to be the heat index here. We're likely looking at mid to upper 90s for heat indices, likely Thursday and Friday. So stay by the air conditioning, stay by the pool, drink water. You know all that stuff. You don't need me to tell you that. Just stay cool this week. Justin? Uh, certainly we'll be trying out there, Dakota. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for us today. Of course, we remind you when you're on the go, simply stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Simply search WNY News Now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. We leave you with a live look over Chautauqua Lake. If you can, uh, get out and enjoy it because it's certainly going to be a hot and toasty one today. We're back tomorrow live right here at noon. We hope to see you then.